Okay, call the regular meeting to order for October 1st, 2024. Uh, Councilor Walbeck will not be here tonight, I don't suspect, and His Worship, uh, Mayor Jacobson, is not able to attend either tonight. Adoption of the agenda. Resolved that the agenda for October 1, 2024, regular meeting of council be adopted moved by Councilor Powell, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. I guess we can't do the additions because not all council is here. So any other discussion? Okay. All in favor? Carried. Confirmation of the last minutes. Resolved that the minutes from September 17th, 2024, regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Council White, seconded by Council Wojciech. Any errors or omissions from those meeting minutes? Seeing nothing, all in favor? Carried. Mr. See if what we need is asking to be let into the meeting. Do you need a few minutes, nurse? I don't know why he's not. We're in our regular meeting. This is the 7616 meeting. Resolved that the letter from the Minister of Municipal and Northern Relations dated September 17, 2024, regarding Mobility Disadvantaged Transportation Program 2024 Interim Operating Grant be received. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor White. Any discussion? Councilor White. I hate to assume it, but I would hope a thank you letter to the Minister would follow from our office. It's simple as a stamp, it's uh, appreciated. Thank you. Nothing else, all in favor? Okay. 6.2, resolved that the letter from the Minister of Municipal and Northern Relations dated September 24, 2024, regarding the 2024 Municipal Operating Grant final payment be received. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Any discussion? Councilor Same comment. Thank you. All in favor? Carried. Seven reports. Director of Public Works report. Resolved that the director of public works report be received. Moved by Council Medwin, seconded by Council White. Discussion. Just quickly, I, I want to apologize to Council for these reports coming on here today. They should, from now on, will be on the Friday before. Okay. Noted that. Council Boychuk. Very much appreciated. 
A um, couple questions on here. You have the foreman report there. These hours that are being tabulated, are they total working hours for all employees, total hours per job? Uh, those are the public works employees, so the where their time is getting coded to. Uh, so like. So that's total number per employee then. So yeah, how many so employees are in this allocation of time? Uh, it would be thirteen.
but everything's ready to go now for next spring. So as soon as the ice is off, we can put it in. That's what you can go ahead. So the budgeted money for that, what will happen? That'll just move on to this the next year, or have the budgeted money we had for, for this yeah. year? Yeah, yeah, it would just be for next year. So, question: Did they say not to use that one? Well, that one, like you have to put in a code to use it, and we were able to get that code last year because they were allowing for the trial period. But this year, like the free trial was done, so we had to pay for it. And so, like there wasn't the option to put it in as a free trial anymore. We had to pay for it. But just going back and forth with uh, the separate lease agreement took longer than I thought. But in the meantime, like we weren't able to use the old one because we weren't paying for it, essentially. But we budgeted for it. It was in this year's budget, so we yeah. could have used it if we just would have yeah. code from them? If Yeah, if I had just going back and forth with the lease agreement took longer than I thought and so that was I would send an email and then be a little lag and then I would get back and I wouldn't be able to deal with it right away because I had to deal with other things. Um, so yeah, if I had if that process had gone quicker then we would have got it in this year but because we didn't like we had to have that signed and before we could put it in. So how will we ensure we get it in for next year? Because everything's signed now okay. and we'll have the unit on hand, the new unit, so it'll be pretty ready to go. So then there won't be anything to wait on. Councilor Paul? So I would I would like to know like what the chemical was that we had to put in there for this year, just to, to know what the chemical the year before, because it, it was in the year before as well, right? It's been a yeah. two year. So, I yeah, I'd like to know what the cost of the chemical we added to it this year, just so, so we have. Okay, I think I can uh, get the chemical amounts for last year and this year. I think over the trial period we did two years ago, the EMF 3000 proved like we were not saving anything on chemicals, correct? It looked like there was a little bit of savings, but not. We still had to add chemical. Okay. Council Boyd, check. The amount of 14000 for some reason is sticking in my head from previous conversations for that. But I guess as far as like returning emails and stuff in a timely manner, do we have like kind of a two to three business day kind of golden rule or what do we try as far as standards go? Like, and I mean, on their end too, do you know what I mean? Like. If, if it's taking a week or two weeks or three weeks or four weeks to get a returned email, then maybe we shouldn't be dealing with that company. Um, but if we're taking two, three, four weeks to return an email, then I have to question, like, I, for good business practices and, and how we look in the community and, and dealing with other people around, I guess. I would I would say two to three days is, is pretty yeah. maxing out that. Yeah, and it was just, like reviewing things to like yeah this should have been quicker uh, but I'd have to cargo time to fully review it just to make sure we're not signing something uh, you know that okay well now you're locked in for 10 years or whatever kind of thing and so it was, but yeah no it should have been done quicker was it a 10 year lease no it's a one year but just I just meant like it took time to review it to make sure mm -hmm. that uh, like before signing it that it was what we were expecting kind of thing. Okay. Any other discussion on the report? All in favor? Carried. Council and CEO reports. Council reports. Uh, Council boy check. Uh, so uh, we had our cal on September 24th, and then uh, the day after we had another meeting with the Swamp Valley Legacy Committee and the Recreation Committee regarding the grant application. Working on that, I think it was over three hours we were here. 
um, September 26th, I attended the CMHA AGM uh, over Zoom, lasted about 30 minutes. Uh, it was unfortunate that we couldn't review the documents prior to the meeting there as well because I definitely had some, some questions as it was going through, but by the time, it was only 30 minutes, so by the time it got done and went on, it was, I wasn't able to really ask those. So. Um, other than that, we have this meeting today, and then again, we'll be meeting with the Ladies Committee and uh, Recreation regarding the grant later this week. That's everything for me. Okay. Council Medley? Uh, well, I uh, attended the Housing Summit on September 19th, and that was a very uh, beneficial day, I believe. Uh, we got a review on the Timberland project, which ran from March 2nd to July 22nd. Uh, there was quite a few partnerships in there that involved uh, multiple different uh, professionals in mental health, uh, primary care, Prairie Mountain, harm reduction, uh, community mobilization, so employment and income assistance, so great use of the resources that we do have available in the community and obviously uh, good in regards to economic development and having jobs. Uh, the overall approach for the Timberland project was a project uh, multidisciplinary team based approach to support individuals in the community who are struggling with homelessness and or eminent risk of housing loss that are dealing with multi-layered mental health issues and or addictions. They provided some very uh, impressive results coming from that project in our community and uh, I was very Im impressed by it. I believe they are going to come to a presentation to all of council in the near future to share all of that information. I also attended the community safety well-being meeting on September 26th and that was actually a discussion of the core group in regards to the resolutions that uh, council passed previously uh, regarding harm reduction and housing projects and a request that our written resolutions are worded in a way that is more positive and that the intent behind the resolutions are clearly conveyed in the written words. Um, so there was a request for us to maybe rewrite those resolutions so they were clear and actually conveyed that intent without negativity portraying um, our nonprofit organizations in the community. I also had the opportunity, I was in Gimli last week, so or some um, CUPW uh, leadership training and I got to exchange uh, some words with Premier Canoe and said hello to him and I also had a nice little chat with the uh, Minister of Agriculture, uh, Mr. Oh, what's his name, Ron? Prestition. Thank you, I was forgetting his last name. But uh, yes, I had a very nice conversation with him and my opinions on our community at this point in time. And that's about all I've got. I was away for the cow. Okay. Councilor White. Uh, the 19th, I, I had the pleasure of uh, attending the homelessness uh, seminar at the Westwood. Also, uh, what a compliment to the uh, many, many people of uh, the healthcare world and professionals to attend. And I think there's a lot of wonderful ideas, a lot of goal setting, where to go and how to get there. But uh, perhaps my, my uh, my business background in my community, uh, I, I, I hate to even go here because there's so many good things, but the business community wasn't represented, minimally. The community as a whole wasn't represented, minimally, and hopefully that will follow because that suggestion did come. But uh, with the, uh, the, the uh, experiment at the Timberland, but I, as I understood it, there are 32 plus or minus people involved at the beginning of those 32 people, I believe two have done some wonderful things. That's really positive, that's optimistic. But I'm not sure what the dollar value was because that was not shared with a cost. It cost half a million, a million bucks. I would rather, than, again, from my perspective, that social workers, psychologists, psychiatrists, uh, I'd rather that money have gone there than putting a half a million dollars into what appeared to be 32 people to start up, two of which did wonderfully and what a compliment those two. So, there's lots of good stuff. I hate to even go to the dark side, but there certainly wasn't a side that wasn't discussed at length. Then on the 23rd, I went to the high school 
for uh, Dr. Sinclair, Mary Sinclair's son, who talked about reconciliation. That's a wonderful idea of where we've gone in the past and how we should be going in the future. And I, I really appreciated uh, the chief from South Korea, Nelson Janai's comments that we're all one, we're all equal, we all have to help one another, we all need one another, and trying to stay in the high road with that. So I appreciated uh, Chief Janai's comments. And then uh, I had the pleasure of uh, being led by Deputy Mayor Morio and uh, other councillors, uh, Councillor Boychuk, myself, uh, Mr. Bobbitt, and we tried to light up, light up the park, as it were. And uh, I'm cautiously optimistic that will work. We put up a bunch of uh, motion lights. Then on the 24th, uh, I had the pleasure of working with the CEO Pool, and we had an EcoStrat meeting with these people who represent basically the world. And, equal projects and they're looking at trying to get uh, biofiber to uh, use in, in different ways. Electricity, for example, could be one of them. And one of the things that we're looking at in our valley is the availability of wood fiber from the uh, spruce products of the world, etc. And it could be farming byproduct also. So that's still a work in progress and it's a potential for development of a, a business here and a, an operation here. So we stay positive in that. And then Cow, we talked about uh, capital plans, financial plans. And uh, I had uh, the pleasure of attending the, the uh, Truth and Reconciliation meeting on the 30th with some other two or three hundred people and they talked about uh, things where we could work together collaboratively and try to make the world a better place to be. And that's an awesome goal. And I'm sure there's different opinions on how to make that happen. So uh, I want to thank Councillor Powell here for being an integral part of making all that happen. So thank you. Councilor Powell? Hey, well, I think everything's pretty much been mentioned that I've taken part. We've taken part in the Legacy, uh, Swan Valley Legacy Committee. We had um, CMHA and the Housing Summit, um, the CAL. Um, we've had a meeting with the library. We have lots of, there's lots of things going on there with the, um, with, uh, the October Fest. Uh, October Fest. Spooktoberfest. I can never say that right. Spooktoberfest coming up. Um, and yes, we did have our reconciliation walk yesterday. Um, it was in great attendance. We had a lot of people that were um, attended and, and truly, truly, it was an amazing event. And uh, you know, we hope that it gets bigger and bigger every year. So yeah, and just a huge thanks to everybody who did attend. And for myself, nothing that uh, has been not reported already. And then there's a CEO pool. You have your report on there? Yeah, again, apologize for getting it up this afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> just a heavy hitter. I can answer any questions you have on the written report, but uh, interviews uh, continue for the clerical staff position. Uh, the RCMP staff sergeant will be meeting on the 15th, just with council votes. So he, he has a report. Our first AMM communication report and a stats uh, report, which we'll send out by email and attach it to the agenda. Expect that for review. Uh, just to let council know, the October 8th cow will be the priority workshop, so that will be on the agenda. And we do have the survey for the animal control bylaw complete, or at least drafted, uh, so we'll. We're going to send that through council to see if any red flag questions or any additions or deletions. But that should be going out sooner or later. And that is everything. Questions to see you pool. Filter med. What does, I have a couple. What does DPC stand for? Mm -hmm. uh, design phase consultant. Okay. And, um, you have on here information required from council with regards to ministers we would like to meet with during fall AMM. I'd like it on the record that I'd like to meet with the Minister of Housing, Homelessness and Addictions, please. Yeah, we will have, I think that'll be a cal item for council to discuss and we can have a, I can show you last year's meeting so that we have an idea of the topics here. But you can that add that onto the list already? Okay. Yeah. You had a couple there, you, or is that all, Councilor Medley? That was it. Okay, Councilor White. You linked your uh, consultation with uh, Staff Sergeant Henson. 
Uh, did you talk about, uh, like I, on my phone, I'm getting three or four a day, it seems to relative to the rascals in our community who are doing illegal activities. And one of the comments was, I have, and if this is an individual, I can't accept it as being right or wrong, they phoned the RCMP 15 times and they've had no reply. So somehow I think it's imperative that uh, point of order. How is this relevant to the CAO's report? Uh, the comment was he had met with the staff sort of. So, so I wonder, did you talk about? So you see, asking a question? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yes. So if you met with the staff sergeant, it has the, uh, from my perspective, the, the lack of return phone calls to some, appears to some individuals. Did you get the chance to talk about that? Uh, de about their staffing? Definitely. But you'll see that very evidence on the report we're going to get. So uh, a direct answer to that, I'll let him answer that. Because okay. I may That's just construe, but you'll see the data in the report. Thank you. Council Boy Chuck. So bullet number three, working on a report for council for understanding on the municipality's counseling of finance fees. Was that supposed to be the interest fees, the question I had had? Finance fees, yeah, interest fees. Interest? Okay, because I was like, finance or interest, two different things in my brain, but yeah. okay, as long as that's still in there. Yeah. And then the meeting with the residents on the empty lots uh, there, a couple points down, what was what was that about? Like, just inquiring on lots that we owe to purchase. Oh, to purchase, and okay. Just having meetings with them, explaining the utilities, the process that to build, they want. No. Okay, and then... Have we had interviews for the clerical position? Uh, we have held two. Two? And is there more? or? Uh, we're, we just got a late application on Friday at the end of the day, so we're the committee so discussing more in the third. Okay. Um, and then the probation review, was that like just for upcoming like new hires so they understand how that goes? or? or? That's an event. Like every employee goes through a uh, six month probation period, okay. so then they must go through an evaluation prior to that. So that, oh, that's so that's the new works. clerk previous. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good, good. And then one more. Well, no, I have a couple more actually. Jeez, Tracy. Uh, the crime there, uh, you're speaking to you at the Vets Hall, assisting Recreation Department on Neal issue at Vet Hall. I'm wondering if maybe it might be a good idea if. if uh, Lana were to move back to the vets hall and then that way we have somebody in each of the facilities especially since we seem to be having issues there that might be something we need to look at to have someone on hand handling that I know I've driven by and I'm like there's a whole lot of people out at the back and just having someone there consistently might help that, that would do it but I, I don't I think the results of that may be worse on the recreation side we can we can bring that up and, and bring an answer back to council, but uh, yeah, we can look at that. And last but not least, the accommodation tax bylaw there. Uh, there was contact information requested. Was that provided? Or were they to look that up? The request for the contact? Yeah. It was just by email. So okay. they sent an email requesting the contact to the governor, lieutenant governor's office. Perfect. And do you think it would be a good idea to put in a bit of an explanation in the newspaper for our general population or even on our website, kind of explaining it, how council came to the idea, where yes. we, you know, see it going, the benefits and, and whatnot uh, to the community, um, and just explaining how it kind of works so that everybody's on the same page. I just was thinking about that just to clear up any kind of misconceptions that there might be. Yes, clarity is always good. Mm -hmm. I We can draft like a summary process document explaining what we've done, mm -hmm. why. Yeah, and kind of like just explaining it in general, like the definition of it. Uh, and then the one other thing, it was just, uh, I think Council Powell and I were talking, the G8 agenda for next week, did we get a finalized one out or nothing yet? Well, we, we send our info to them, to them yeah. and then they finalize. Okay, so it's still coming. Right? Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that when we are listed on there that the town is going to be speaking first and then the legacy committee for oh. the presentation. Just so that, because I think what we speak to will answer a number of questions 
um, and then the legacy committee can kind of speak to their thing. I, I, I think there'll be more questions coming up that wouldn't necessarily. I can confirm that. Okay, perfect. That's everything. Okay, Council Paul, did you have anything? No. Okay, Council Wright. Uh, we talked about the EcoStrat and doing a, a preliminary meeting, you and I, about where we're going. I somehow I don't have that in my book. I have the uh, 17th as the EcoStrat meeting at 11 a.m. I'll contact you tomorrow with the okay. time meeting. Thank you very much. Okay. New, new business, 8.1. Resolved that the mayor and chief exec or administrative officer be authorized to sign the 2024 to 2034 Canada Community Building Fund or CCBF administrative agreement. Moved by Council White, seconded by Council Boychuk. Uh, CEO Poole, you want to just give a highlight as to what that actually is and means to for once, or, or does Council have questions on that? This is the guardrail for our gas tax agreement. So basically the, the agreement that allows the feds to give it and us to accept it and what the rules are in terms of us accepting that money from the feds. Okay, so, so basically it's just a, a renewal of the current one with a few minor changes and in our community it's too small to qualify or be under that, that new housing requirement was what they're Correct. stating in there. Okay, all in favor? Carried. Point of privilege. Are we a scent free facility? A scent free? Yes. Is there not a sign on the front door? That uh, we're a scent free environment? Generally, yeah. Because there is a fragrance in the room and it's affecting my allergies. So if we can be mindful in the future, please. Like cream. Please. Maybe my cream. I've used it quite a few times, so. All I know is there's a fragrance in the room and it's affecting my allergies. Okay, do we know it? Okay. 8.2. Resolve that the council award RFQ 1906 and 1907 to Parkland Restoration. Moved by. Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor Powell. Uh, discussion or CEO Pool, you have any uh, additional information on that to clarify what's there? Uh, yeah, we are recommending uh, that we use parkland restoration to demolish these houses. So you'll see in the quotes that there was a bid substantially lower. But once you once we reviewed the bid, it is it's very clear that the the contractor was not experienced uh, with asbestos abatement, and the town has hired this person for demolition several years ago, and and basically no asbestos abatement was done. Only spraying with water. That's not enough. The province says that's not enough. That is his plan. Uh, so we do not recommend hiring that or accepting that bid. But you do get to see it. Uh, that is the reason why we recommend the high bid on demolitions. Other than that, uh, Council should know that the owner of one of these properties is a local bank, so we are going to attempt to, uh, I guess, pass the expense on to them as opposed to adding to taxes prior to commencing the work. Okay. So this is a result of the uh, RFQ that went out for two uh, severely fire damaged homes in our community Correct. that are still not uh, the uh, what you call it, demolished as per the bylaw and we can confirm that the uh, all the necessary proper procedures and notifications to the registered property owners have been followed and reviewed by our legal team okay any, any other discussion all in favor? Carried. 8.3. Resolved that one of the washrooms in Legion Park be reopened on a trial basis. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by, did you have Councilor Powell. 
uh, discussion or uh, Director Clausen, do you have any more information on yeah, that for Council? Yeah, to the side of it. Just jotted down some notes so I didn't miss anything. Uh, so last year, or this year, April 2nd, brought a resolution to Council to close the washroom facilities in the Legion Park because of the vandalism, the cleanliness issues, and the strain on the rec department to keep up with the work. Um, and since we did that, we only had compliments from the public. The public thought that was also a good idea. Members of the public, if they need a key, they get a key and then they can access for their events and stuff. So um, that, I believe, was, a good, was the right decision for us. However, the last couple of months, kind of towards the end of summer and over the last month or so, uh, rec staff have been having to clean up human waste from the Legion Park. As disgusting as it was, they were cleaning it up in hopes that, um, you know, it was a one or two time thing and the public wouldn't end up in it, for lack of a better word. Unfortunately, it's not been a one or two time thing. It's escalated to the point where the park has become littered with poo and toilet paper, blows around the park. Um, becomes quite messy at times. So again, we're looking at that biohazard, one of the reasons why we cl closed the washrooms in the first place. So we talked about it in the management team back and forth a few times, and we developed safe work procedures. We provided PPE and training to the, to the staff. And, um, you know, they were on board for a little bit until it started happening more and more and more. Like they couldn't cut the grass. They couldn't, like it was really affecting, and it was really, really gross. So um, we went to the staff and said, you know, we provided you with the safe work procedure, the training and stuff like this is part of your duties now. And uh, they really took a stand and they were willing to risk disciplinary action and refused to do this work. Um, and honestly, I would have too. So in an effort to support them and hear them out, um, their compromise, their suggestion was to open the North Washroom over by the cook shack because they realize that this is something we have to do. They realize it is their work, but they would rather clean it up out of a building than all over the park. So we um, brought that to manager meeting and you know we all kind of supported and felt the, the same way. So uh, I went back to my office that day and we opened up that washroom. And it wasn't for a few days that I realized that I'd gone against the resolution, like full transparency, forgot about the resolution, opened the washroom, it wasn't malicious or anything, but that's what happened. So last week we brought it to the CAL meeting and we had a really good discussion and we really are appreciative of council's conversation and the, the support that, that we had in that matter. So um, this, uh, this resolution here, is a resolution to reopen the North Washroom as a trial until winter, which is probably, you know, around the corner we have to shut the water off anyways. And then also I'm hoping we can make a little revision to this resolution that um, the washroom functionality be left up to the director to determine best course of action. So if we need to close it, I can close it without having to come back to council and get another resolution. Um, should this escalate and we end up in the same boat we were in the spring, why we closed it. And the trial is really to determine whether the people are still choosing to poop in the park or if they're going to use the washroom. So that's my notes. Okay, so who moved that? Pardon me? Who, who moved that resolution? I have Councillor Boychuk, mm -hmm. seconded by Councillor Powell. Powell. Okay, so you're asking that council consider it, that amendment? An amendment to the resolution, A, that we open up the North Washroom, and B, that the operational capacity live within the rec department to open and close as we see fit. That's it. Our CEO pool. There is a, there's a learning thing here. So this, this is the reason why at AMM meetings that council doesn't pass resolutions in directives and operations. So technically, if she goes against the resolution, she can get reprimanded for that. So if we have a whole bunch of these, now we have the north one open by resolution, the south one closed by resolution. In order to open the other one and close the other one, we need council's resolution. So eventually, I would see a resolution coming that the washrooms we open back at Director Clausen's direction. But just it's just a learning thing that that's this is exactly why that isn't done. 
That's a boy check. That's kind of what I was going to say. I think it, obviously, throughout this whole time, it was always at the discretion of the recreation director, what happens when they open, when they close, and, and all of that. Um, I would actually just make a recommendation to rescind the previous resolution and put that the, the washrooms in the Legion Park are back under the discretion of the recreation director. And um, I guess going forward. Yeah, so, so you're making, I guess, looking to amend the resolution that the washrooms be and rescind the previous resolution so that that error in yeah. operations is, is rectified and then going forward putting it back into recreation director classes. Um, but I do feel that in the future, not maybe by resolution, but if anything were to come up like this, council should be kept in the loop of anything happening. That's kind of my comment to you. I think the reason we brought it forward is it was a pretty big change to the community. It, we didn't know what the impact was going to be. So we were looking for council's support and backing on it. It ended up being a good decision in my point of view, and but we've kind of come full circle. So. Yeah. Do you have Hello. a resolution on this? Okay, Councilor Powell, do you a seconder support that amendment or? I do. I, I, yeah, and my only thing is just to let us know if should there be yeah. you know the changes or anything like that. So we're not by somebody else letting us know beforehand. So. Okay. So. Uh, CEO Pool, you're making those amendments? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. While we're waiting on that, uh, Director Clausen, did you reach out to CMHA regarding the, the cleaning and such like we had spoke about in the cow? Or? I didn't reach out to CMHA. I got quotes and stuff on porta potties and what that would be if we decided to go that way but i've not reached out to cmha we are planning a meeting with them and that will be on there okay but we haven't got that for yet yeah 2024-0133 the resolution on there. and i guess just one more thing to add like it's still part of the bigger problem right like you know, when we talk about harm reduction and stuff and they're, they're meeting people where they are, people don't have anywhere to use a washroom. They don't have shower facilities. So that's what this has turned in a little bit to. Uh, there's a tap down at the park that they'll turn on and they'll wash and then it gets left on. So we've been forced to shut the water off to that so that it doesn't get left on, but that's impacting people that are watering the flowers. Like everything is just kind of having a ripple effect, right? Like. This is just another small thing in, in this larger picture. So ideally, we'd like to open our washrooms up back to the way they used to be. But right now, we got this little hiccup where it's just part of a bigger issue right now, and and here we are. So I just wanted that noted that we aren't you know doing this to be mean to anybody, but that is why we had to close it. So, so we'll add that to part of the harm reduction yeah. housing conversation. Yeah. Okay. Just waiting on the CEO pool to have we were Councilor White. So when uh, PMH hypothetically is going to be here, uh, Director, I'd encourage you to bring those points up, please. Yeah, I hope to. Okay, thank you. Okay, fresh. Right. So resolved that resolution number 2024-0133 one of the washrooms. Oh no, I, I uh, refresh again. Refresh again. Okay. It's missing some wording. Okay. Resolved that resolution 2024-0133 be rescinded and the washrooms in the Legion Park be opened and closed at the discretion of the Recreation Director. That was moved by uh, Councilor Boyd Chuck, seconded by Councilor Powell. Any other discussion? All in favor? Carried. Eight point four. Columbarium purchase resolved that the columbarium be purchased from Nelson Granite for the cost of twenty one thousand four hundred dollars plus applicable taxes. Moved by 
Councilor Medwig, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. You'll see uh, the MIN report there. Uh, Director Harvey, you got any comments on that? Yeah, um, so this is uh, a 48 inch uh, columbarium, and uh, we sent out the RFQ to columbarium companies. Uh, we had Nelson Granite and Sunset Memorial uh, respond with quotes. Uh, one for $21,400, one for $33,900, and uh, this is approved and we'd uh, get the foundation ready and then it can be brought up and set on the foundation and then uh, for a columbarium spaces as an option for the public for interments as they don't want to be interred and have their own separate headstone in the plot. Okay, Councilor Medley. What is the size of our current columbarium? Uh, it's 84 volts. So this is roughly half the size? Yeah, but this one has uniform volts, so the urns have gotten bigger, and so what used to be two urn volts sometimes don't fit with two urn volts. So this one, everyone can fit two urns in here. So it's one with a different style so that that can be done and then there isn't issues with the size of the urns. I'm just wondering, like, is that the exact coloring of it? Like for aesthetics in there, I guess I was just thinking there'd be some consistency. Like I, every time we go get something new, I don't think like a different piece and a different shape. Do you know what I mean? I just think it looks messy and un organized and maybe not planned yeah. out well like yeah. is there any way to make sure that like if we did two of these maybe they're in the center and then did another one like the other one eventually down the road potentially to keep some kind of uniformity in the yeah yeah like we can place these ones in a semicircle around uh, the current one it has black shutters that company no longer exists and uh, the black shutters these companies they don't cover them under warranty because I guess they can crack and mm -hmm. or something. So it is a different color vein. That was my thought is to have kind of like three in a semicircle around that kind of thing. Councilor Medwick? What was our original budget? Uh, it was a hundred thousand that was based off the old one and five percent added on per year. That was a placeholder budget to make sure it was than sufficient. So there's obviously enough in the budget to do the base? Of yeah. Perfect. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? Carried. Uh, 8.5. Engage. Whereas the town of Swan River has engaged Johnson Controls to initiate the work required to submit an application to the federal government's Green and Inclusive Community Buildings Grant Program, and whereas the notification of the program came out in August and the intake period closes October 16th, 2024, therefore it be resolved that the town of Swan River signed the attached proposed development agreement with Johnson Controls in the amount of $28,500 to complete the work required to submit a grant application to the federal government's green and inclusive community buildings program. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor Powell. The CEO Poole, I know we discussed that, I had a resolution similar before, but we have a firm fixed price now for, so I guess this is basically for transparency to the public of what this is, correct? That's correct. The engagement resolution has been passed. Council has promised a fixed price for the work. Uh, this this is for transparency to let everyone know how much this is going to cost. Okay. Uh, Councillor, you got your hand up, Councillor Borchuk? Yeah, I just, um, just for time's sake, uh, the second whereas there, it came out in August, but actually the application didn't open so you could even view it until September 4th. So just to express the tight timeline with regard to this um, and putting the August in there, if we could update it or, or say September 4th. Um, Received September 4th? Uh, or was accessible, like the, the application was accessible for the program on September 4th. 
so you have basically three or four days to. So, so that would be an amendment to add accessible September 4th. So just need the second or two or three. Yes. Mm -hmm. You agree with that amendment? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Let me know when you're not done there, so you'll pull. resolution. It was moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell, whereas the Town of Swan River engaged Johnson Controls to initiate the work required to submit an application to the federal government's Green and Inclusive Community Buildings Grant Program, and whereas the notification of the program came out in August, accessible and available on September 4th, 2024, and the intake period closes October 16th, 2024. Therefore, it be resolved that the Town of Swan River signed the attached proposed development agreement with Johnson Controls in the amount of $28,500 to complete the work required to submit a grant application to the federal government's Green and Inclusive Community Buildings Program. Any further comments or discussion? All in favor? Carried. Finished business accounts 1.1. Resolved that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. One general accounts checks number 32052 to number 32107, totaling $784,415.35 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll account checks number 5491 to number 5495, totaling $108,286.13 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposit payments totaling $825 as listed on Schedule C. And direct deposit payments totaling $131,085.15 as listed on Schedule D. Moved by Council Medwood, seconded by Councilor Powell, uh, discussions, Councilor Medley. I would just like to thank CFO Ganita. I truly appreciate your explanation report. And it significantly reduces my questions. So, TDC turf uh, number 32056, $1,963.50 for mowing, trimming on CN property. Is this an expense that we then transfer on to invoice out to CN to reimburse? Uh, yes, they agreed to that. Okay. And 32071, uh, CMB Sterling Enterprises, 500,792.25 paving capital projects, patching various locations. Is How is this on par with what we budgeted for this fiscal year? Are we on par, above, below? Uh, we're right close. There's a couple projects that are going to be right tight. Comes in, there was one that was uh, several thousand below cheaper, uh, so that'll help, but it's about on par with what we mentioned. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor? Carried. 10.2. Whereas section 326 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes and subsection 300-6 uh, provides that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations from the Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations provided by the Manitoba Assessment Services on September 23rd and 24th be made to the 2024 uh, property tax roll with the resulting increases totaling $459.27 uh, 
and the resulting reductions of $1,228.11. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Wojciech. Um, <coughs> any discussion? None. All in favor? Do we have to wait? Nope. We just note that Councilor Medwood had left the room prior to the res resolution being read. Once the resolution is read, then they can't leave. But once they, if it hasn't been read yet, then they can, the person can leave. Uh, and that was carried. Uh, 11, on the bylaws, 11.1, .1, resolved that bylaw 11, 20, 24, being a bylaw for the town of Swan River to cancel, uh, cancel the authorized borrowing authority be read a first time. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor White. Uh, leave this just a, a formality to cancel the borrowing bylaw for the, the fire truck purchase where it was funded other alternative sources and to get this clarified through paperwork. Okay, all in favor? Carried. Notice of motion 12.1. Resolve that council confirm the order of the designated officer in regard to appeal hearing 1 2024 in accordance with bylaw 6 2023. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor Powell, uh, CEO Pool. You will just want to refresh our memories on this, uh, so I, I got to figure it out, but let you. Yeah, uh, so the notice of motion is to bring back this resolution to either be voted on and approved, defeated, or amended. So council at the, at our last meeting decided that they wanted, you know, there was a, there's an amendment to be made with, with conditions on the approval of this order. So I have drafted that. I can put that in there for council to review and then we can make further amendments. Okay. Are we looking to make an amendment? Do we, do, first, does council know what property we're talking about? Sorry. Oh. This is for 346 6th Avenue South, the, the public hearing that we had in the summer. We had an order to demolish that property after a legal review and uh, another meeting with the owners. Uh, had, we've decided that we would I guess, reconsider the approval of the order to demolish, but uh, with conditions. Okay, so, uh, thank you. Okay, we had this lengthy discussion mm -hmm. at Cal meeting, so um, the resolutions on the table. Um, we can either move that or bring forward the pre drafted amendment that was brought forward. Have we seen this amendment? I and my memory refreshed. Yeah. No, I just drafted it like you're making it with me. Yeah. Make it bigger? <laughs> Please. While you're away, Councilor Med, with this, we've moved on to the, your notice of motion that you have brought forward. So this is, so this is the, uh, uh, I believe, the draft uh, amended uh, regarding this property. Thank so, you. so, but as currently, uh, for your information, the resolution uh, was read. There has been no amendment brought forward. This is just a draft one that should someone bring forward to formally. Okay, Councilor Powell. No, I have no problem. I just want if in six months it's not done, then we're not going to wait another six months and have this issue, right? This was quite timely for. 
Uh, no, we will we will enforce. So at the very least, if if we start the process again, it will be around 45 days that, that bylaw takes. So it would be this plus 45 days at the very max. That's a good check. So refresh my memory, the timeline that the property owners had since the fire to today. Uh, the, the fire happened in March of 22. Uh, you know, no work had been observed and the, you know, the, the town went through several processes of, of going through the existing unsightly bylaw. Uh, to demolish the property uh, and in May of 2024 we, we started from scratch on the process uh, and had a solid process but because of the happenings in 2023 including a building permit that was taken out rescinded uh, we had recommended that uh, and also an engineering review was done in the fall of 2023 uh, we, rec we recommended that you know, the, the work was done, so he did get a notice to, to fix it in May, but the, and he had a deadline of 30 days to show the work was being done. There was no indication that that did happen, but uh, the first indication that we did see work being done was July 9th when I went to the property and was given a tour by the owner, so by the owner's representative. So that was the first sign that any work had been done since March of 2022, the fire. So there's no, there's no denying that the work has been done, it's been cleaned up, the floor has been done, there's still work to be done on the engineering report that was received, including, including some smoke damage and some windows. Uh, but the work, there's no doubt the work has been done. So that, that was the reason for the the consideration of conditions on the, on the demolition. Councilor Bedwick. I just want to make note that um, there is some conflicting communications with regards to the entire process. Uh, the property owner and their representative have indicated that through their engineering report they have started doing some work. Pictures do show that some work has been done. The house can be restored to a living condition and the engineer as well as property owners have indicated that if we continue to pursue the demolition that they will pursue legal options and I don't feel that's the best route for taxpayers money so I'm willing to move that we bring forward the amended resolution with the conditions in place and allow him six months to meet the terms of the engineering report as well as bring it up to a habitable state and condition and go from there. Okay, so who moved that? I did. Okay, and Council Powell, you seconded? Or mm -hmm. mover and seconder? Actually, I would like to actually beef this up even more so and say that the conditions within six months and any day after institute fines going forward because if there hasn't been anything done in two and plus years, I don't know if six months is necessarily going to get it done and I want to make sure that whatever we do and if we do grant this amendment, that it does get done in six months um, and it's they're not going to go past it and you're not gonna be able to start that process again because obviously they're going to put in money and such and you're not gonna it's not gonna be the same process as what we had been doing before so is that a possibility okay so so before we get to that as part of process we have an amendment on the floor no sorry um does everybody understand what the amendment saying is that the the resolution is only like the the, the demolition is only being rescinded on the condition that the house is being brought up to code and habitable within the six months. After the six months, then the resolution reverts back to demolition. Mm -hmm. That's a good flag. Yeah. So to the condition to rescind the resolution is you have to meet that condition, which is up to habitable. 
goals mm -hmm. that so does that answer your yeah because mm -hmm. um, then if you don't meet that condition then the original resolution stands am I interpreting that correct CEO pool that is correct okay, okay. so does that address your concerns mm -hmm. okay. so mover and second do you agree to the amend or proposed amendment to the resolution mm -hmm. yeah. okay any further discussion on the I guess again uh, so CEO pool you want to move change that yep. to the amended and then I'll have to reread that so, just trying to simplify because then we have to deal with one amendment per mm -hmm. time and my Robert's rules is a little rusty right now <laughs> <laughs> And update. Okay. okay. The amended resolution moved by Trace Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell, resolved resolve that the town of the Swan River rescind resolution 2024-0229 on the following conditions, that the owner within six months complete the work as listed in the edifice engineering report in addition to the satisfaction of the town of Swan River's authority having jurisdiction that the dwelling is up to code and habitable in the case that the owner doesn't complete the above the above conditions I think there's a one too many laws there within six months the town of Swan River shall enforce the demolition order as per unsightly by all procedures any further discussion that's a court check Okay, but the way that's worded there, then we're going to have to go through the unsightly bylaw procedure again and do the whole 45 thing. And you were saying we're rescinding that, uh, that well, resolution. So I would say we are suspending resolution 2024-2029 on these conditions. I wouldn't say we're rescinding it because then it's gone and we can't put it back. And I would say that the town is one of us shall enforce the demolition as per suspended resolution. 2024-0229. Well, the rescinding the resolution, it doesn't count unless the conditions are met. So if they're not met, it's mm -hmm. not rescinded. Okay. okay. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Carried. So administration will work with the building inspector and the property owners, whoever's representing whoever there. Yep. Um, for all parties um, are in the know on that file so that we can close up that loop. Okay, 13 members privilege. Uh, as per our new procedures bylaw, uh, so members privilege is now ahead of in camera, so Council Medwood. My leadership uh, training last week, I we were all given a topic to do a two-minute speech on. And with um, Truth and Reconciliation uh, around the corner at the time I did it and in our current state, I'd like to read it here for my members' privilege because I think it's very applicable. So my topic was intersectionality. How can understanding intersectionality improve leadership approaches to social justice? So intersectionality is a term originally coined in 1989 by Kimberly Williams Crenshaw with its roots in black feminist movement. Before that was the anti-racist movement which focused on black men, the feminist movement which focused on white women. Neither social justice movement took into account the challenges of the black woman. Intersectionality is a unique combination of identities and how these impact a person's experience of discrimination. So why is intersectionality important for leaders? It raises awareness of discrimination, promotes equality and diversity, ensures all members feel safe and supported, improves overall health and well-being. How can we as leaders apply this? In my role as a municipal leader, our community has seen a, an overwhelming amount of homelessness. We have also seen an increase in mental health, addictions, and cr criminal issues to the point of borderlining a crisis situation. Many in the community call for these vulnerable to be loaded onto a bus and sent back to the reserves. 
However, if we strip away all discriminatory factors, such as race, creed, color, age, gender, and or social economic standings, what I see is human beings. Human beings who have fallen on hard times, some who have succumbed to mental health and or addiction issues, who are literally living on our streets and committing acts of crime to meet their basic needs. Why? Because our community lacks meal programs, we have no shelter, rehab, treatment, or healing centers. We have no tiered housing to elevate and support our vulnerable from a status of living on the street to being able to acquire the skills and the support and ability to rent, own, or live independently. Locally, we have limited to no resources to offer our most vulnerable and even consider embarking on a path towards wellness and healing. A community is only as strong as its weakest or most vulnerable member. As leaders, we will be faced with numerous decisions. So let's focus on elevating our vulnerable to strengthen our community as a whole, and let us choose kindness, because in the end, we all bleed bread. And I really feel that's applicable because we are facing some very hard times in our community, first ever experiences. We've been around for over 120 years. and. They're new for us, but we need to address those and we need to meet the needs of our community within our community. Culture boy, Chuck. Um, I guess for member privilege, we uh, attended the Truth and Reconciliation Walk at the Friendship Center yesterday and Lake Tanya, where Councillor Powell said uh, it was a really overwhelming uh, group of people there. There were so many in attendance and it was very nice to be a part of it. Um, and like Councillor White had said, uh, some of us councillors met in the Legion and put up lights. Maybe not as high as we should have apparently, but uh, the thought was there. And uh, that's, that's it for my moment of privilege. Okay. Councillor Paul. Um, okay, so I guess of course, like I mentioned before, the uh, Truth and Reconciliation Walk yesterday. But I um, just wanted to make a note that we have, um, to, if you get a chance, I know our Facebook for the Albert Sharpton French Center is always promoting different things, but our website too as well, it has a lot of different programs that are going on. Uh, we have health navigators and um, different things like that for people. Uh, I guess we also have uh, um, our Fridays or like our uh, basically feed the homeless. Uh, it's an initiative we're trying right now, so every Friday at 11 o'clock, so if you know of anybody who needs a meal or anything like that, please send them down to the Friendship Center. Creek classes are starting. October. This is a very busy month because all of our program, everything starts in October, so we have Creek classes starting, so if anybody's interested in something like that, um, gym nights, fiddling, swimming, and beating classes. So, you know, by all means, take a look at our, our website to see what those are all are. Everybody's welcome to take part in any of those. Um, I guess the other big thing is Stampeders have a couple games this weekend. Should be a busy, busy uh, weekend at the rink. Hopefully, uh, hopefully everything goes well. And you know, Friday, you know, Friday and Saturday night, right? Both, right? So, yeah. Hope everybody can attend one of the games. Uh. That's all right. I see so many kindness and caring things that our community is. Many, many is enough, obviously not, but sometimes we just dwell on the things we're not doing and we don't uh, recognize the, the many, many positive things that are happening. And people like yourself, Tanya, and your team are doing wonderful things. On the paid commercial announcement world, uh, October 17th, the uh, National Wildlife Federation is having a meeting at the Veterans Hall in the evening, talking about resource management, which applies to so many people in our valley. I encourage people to participate. And on the, November the 9th, the Swan Valley Outdoors team is having their third or fourth annual dinner and we've already spent $132,000 of your monies and it's all spent in, our, in the valley in the community. So it's, been a, it's a wonderful program and helps so many people. So I encourage people to attend both events. Thank you. CEO Pool. I have nothing to report. Director Hardy. Uh, Spooktoberfest will be October 18th and October 19th, Friday and Saturday, looks like 6 to 9-ish. 
or they'll be selling tickets till nine. And uh, if you want to get scared by the CAO and myself, <laughs> come on down. In addition to a bunch of other people. Yeah. Director Clausen. Uh, just kind of jotting some things down here while I'm hearing from everybody else. Uh, pool update, we're at the tail end of our maintenance. Uh, we'll start filling on Thursday. Um, so our target opening date is uh, October 8th. Uh, everything went well. And I just, you know, I, I got some quality time last week with uh, mayor and deputy mayors. We wandered around the park and looked at where we were going to put the lights. and. Uh, you know, I got to speak freely on a couple things, and I just appreciate them listening to my rants or my ideas. And then also, same out to like administration and Terry and the rec committee. Like we've had a couple tough things lately, and I'm, I always feel like I can put out an email and get uh, feedback, whether it's good or bad. I appreciate it all. So I just, you know, I just wanted to say that. So, and the solar lights, uh, I do appreciate all that work. Uh, CFO Ganita, you have anything? I took a walk through the park this morning when it was still dark, and so I got to test out the solar lights. Yeah. Okay, perfect, thank you. And for myself, I have uh, really nothing that hasn't been reported or new besides the regular files that I've been working on. So, okay. Um, in camera. I see we have no in camera items. So, resolved that regular meeting of council now adjourn at 8.16 p.m. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, second by Councilor Medwood. Discussion, all in favor, 